When you first played Hello Neighbor, did you think, I can make AI better than this? Because apparently, Tiny Bill just went... So here's how you do basic chasing and catching. Create a new character. Set the static mesh to the neighbor little poly skeleton. Turn around so that it's facing forward, there we go. But oh wait, it doesn't have any animations. Create a new blend space 1D and set the skeleton to the neighbor low poly skeleton. Set the maximum access value to 600 and the maximum grid divisions to the 12. At the very beginning, drag and drop the idle animation. At the 100 mark, drag and drop the walking animation. And finally, at the very end, drag and drop the running animation. Oh, and I forgot you gotta name the horizontal axis speed. No, not that type of speed. Now create a new animation blueprint, again, tied to the neighbor low poly skeleton. Create a new float variable called speed. And you might be wondering, how are we gonna use this variable? Well, you'll see in a minute. Drag off of the try get pawn owner and do cast 2bp neighbor. Off of the cast, do get velocity, and off of the velocity, do vector length. Now do set speed and connect that to the vector length returned value. Now in the anim graph, create a new state machine. The first state that we'll be creating is called idle walk run, and inside of it we'll be using the blend space that we just created. And as for the speed pin of the blend space, you guessed it, connect the speed variable to that. Now for the jumping. Create a new boolean variable called falling. Create a new state called jump start. Inside of the transition for jump start, set that to the is falling boolean. Inside of that, set it to the jump start animation. Also turn off looping for the animation. Now create another state called jump loop. Set that to the jump loop animation. Now in the transition, you do time remaining. Now off of that, do less than or equal to 0.2. Now make another state called jump end. This is the last one, I promise. And inside of the state, you set the animation to, you guessed it, jump end. Now for the transition, you get the following variable and do a not boolean. Now connect the jump end state to the idle walk run state and set the transition to time remaining less than or equal to 0.2. Now go back into the event graph, drag off of the cast, get the character movement, get is falling, and set falling to that. Now let's test it to see if it's working. Yay, it's working! Now go into the character blueprint for your neighbor, and add an AI perception component. Now set the sense config to the sight comp- Sight config. Set- set the- sight- sight config. Uh <clears throat> As I was saying, add two AI perception components- Don't rename them. And set the first one to the sight config, and the second one to the hearing config. Add a boolean variable called can see player. Click on AI perception site and right click in the event graph and do on target perception updated. Drag off the stimulus and do break AI stimulus. Do a sequence node. And lastly, drag off the actor and do cast to pp human. Then set can see player after the cast and connect it to the successfully sensed of the AI stimulus. Now make a new folder called enums. Make a new enumeration called neighbor state. Wait, what's that? There's already an enumeration! Really? Yeah, it's called Sosid State. Okay, just delete those and that, there we go. <clears throat> As I was saying, open up the enumeration we just made and add three enumerators, idle, hunt, and attack. Now back in BP Neighbor, create a new function called setState. Add a new input for the enumeration we just made. But wait a minute, there's a couple more things we need to add. Add a new behavior tree and a new blackboard. In the blackboard, add a new enumerator key called state, and set that to the enumeration that we just made. Now in the behavior tree, add a new selector. Create two more selectors and add a blackboard decorator for each, both of them being the state key, and the first one being idle, and the second one being hunt. Now create a new AI controller blueprint, and inside of it, on event possessed, run the behavior tree. Now set the neighbor's AI controller to the very controller that we just made. Now for the set state function, get the blackboard and set the value as an enum. This of course being the state key that we made in the blackboard. 
and as for the enum value, connect it to the input value that we put in the function. Now do exactly as I'm doing here. Listen, I'm getting really tired of editing this video, so please just bear with me here. 